Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And uh, so next in the restaurant wine series is uh, we are going to be doing the uh, Francis Ford Coppola, or the Francis Coppola, I'm sorry, Francis Coppola Diamond Collection Blue Label Merlot 2008 from California. And um, this wine retail at my local specs was $12.49. It will retail in a restaurant for approximately 40 to 50 bucks a bottle. Um, if you bought it from the Coppola Winery, they will charge you $19 online. And their fact sheet suggests that uh, you sell it for $18. And the a restaurant will pay 11 to $12 for the bottle. Again, restaurants are paying about retail, like I guess discounted retail, like it's specs, for these bottles of wine. That's why they charge you so much money for it. By the way, it's also the same thing for beer and liquor. They're about the same. They're not exactly. They might, the retail might be a little bit cheaper. Um, I'm sorry, you know, the restaurant might pay a little bit less money, like a couple dollars less for the same product, like for a bottle of Bacardi. You know, they may, you know, the restaurant may pay uh, $16 and retail might be $17 or $18 for, for a liter or $7.50, whatever it is. All right, so, um, so those are all the pricings. And uh, so Coppola, a little history about Coppola. I mean, I've looked, we've done them before, uh, or we've done wines from, from the Coppola family of wines, uh, not necessarily the blue, the, the diamond collection, blue, blue label. But uh, so like... Grandpa Coppola, like, had made some wine way back in the early 1900s. Uh, Francis got into it, you know, got into it from, from that. And um, in the 70s, once uh, The Godfather came out and he had a bunch of money, uh, he bought the Inglenook uh, Winery. And he bought all the land around it. And part of that included was called the Rubicon Estate. So it started from that in the early, mid 70s, I think it was 75, he bought the whole, bought all that. And then over time, he's bought more and more uh, vineyards and other wineries. And so he's kind of got himself a nice little wine empire now. So he's, you know, he's got the movies, he's got the wine. Go to his sites, um, you go to the Rubicon, the Francis Coppola Winery, go to his websites. There's lots of great stuff on it, lots of nice little history. And uh, just a, it's a really well made uh, website. I've, I've looked at it before. I looked at it again today because I hadn't been I hadn't been by there in a year. So, um, but anyway, uh, fact sheets. I love when wineries have fact sheets. The Blackstone had fact sheets, but not for the current vintage that I had. So, I, I like when you still have I can access your older vintages. Um, but this is like the current vintage. So, 2008. Winemakers Corey Beck, by the way. Um, so let's go down, let's tell you what, what you got here. You have 83% Moreau, 13% Petite Syrah, 2% Syrah, and 2% Petite Verdot. Um, when you read the little fact sheet, they talk about that these other grapes are there to give it a, give it a little oomph on the color. Um, and uh, they, have, they, bought the, the, the bought, they got the grapes from Napa and Sonoma. All right? But since the grapes are not from solely Napa or solely from Sonoma, they cannot call it either one, so they have to call it California. So remember, California means they get it from anywhere in California. All right, so let's, uh, let's check it out. All right, they, they do say it's a fruit forward wine. Uh, I can already start smelling the fruits on it, so a little more fruity than the, or a little fruitier than the other one. Plum, first thing that comes to mind. And I don't need a lot of plums, but uh, 
first thing that comes to mind from, from the aroma is, is plums. Uh, plums and cherries, eh. Plums, cherries, that type of thing. Red fruit in general. Well, purple fruit. Red, reddish purple fruit, because plums aren't really red. Maybe a hint of green, a hint of vegetal in there. Uh, it's pleasant. I like the other one. I like the black stone a little bit better, but again, that's my preference. Remember, listen to what the reviewers say. Don't listen to the scores. I may give something a 95, and, and because it's like perfect right up my alley, because I really, really like it, and I got seduced by it, and I said, give it a great score, but you may go, I like fruit forward wines, and you may think it's an 85 wine. Okay, so remember, listen to what they say or what they or read what they say, don't just go by the score. All right, so let's taste it. All right, this is pretty dry. So if you're, if you're in the restaurant, um, and this, you know, this is a mainly, this is a Merlot, right? So we had the Blackstone, and we had this. This wine, I think, goes really well with, with like a barbecue. This wine, not so much. The tannins really hit you. This is something where I want some, I mean, you can put, if, the bar, if the ribs are fatty ribs, like they're beef ribs, you can do it. But if like baby back ribs, they don't have a lot of fat, they're, they're mostly meat. The, the fat's not going to attack those tannins, or the tannins aren't going to attack the fat as much. Again, if you're going to have, say, a, a filet, um, something that's a lean cut of meat, it's going to work, but I think it's going to work better with like a ribeye uh, or a strip, something or, or something that's a little bit fattier, maybe even, maybe prime rib, but I think I'd probably go a little bit, a little bit different with a prime rib, but they're basically the same cut of meat as a ribeye, so. Um, but a ribeye, it's probably going to go better. I'm not a fan of ribeyes, um, I like leaner meats, but this I think will go better with, with you know, more marbled meat. But it's more fruit forward, for sure. I'm getting more of the cherries rather than, not cherries, I don't get as much plum. I guess the plum's coming through. It's just a general overall, it's, it's fruitier, um, but it's got that, it's got that dry mouth feel. It's not as full bodied. It's not, it's not more, it's not, it doesn't have like a whole lot more body than the, the Blackstone, but it has a better mouth feel for me. I like, I like this wine for what it is better. I think it's a, I think it's a, a notch above the Blackstone. Um, I mean, it, it's about the same, it's very close in price, but you know, it's, you know Blackstone is below the $10, this was above the $10, it's at, it's at one price point as far as um, quality of wines or how they're supposedly made or the, the um, assumption. I think it's a better wine. Um, I'm very, I, I like this actually a lot. Uh, I think I would give it an 88 for how it's made. Um, like I said, I'm not necessarily a fruit forward wine, but this is not fruit, it's not fruit forward, it's just fruitier. Uh, I think it's a better wine. And you got a bit of spice in there. It's kind of spicy fruit. Um, a little bit of vegetal. I don't get like the peppers, it's more just kind of spiciness. It's good. If you, I, I say if you can get it for twelve fifty a bottle, twelve thirteen, if you can find it for like eleven, absolutely buy it. Um, if uh, this is a style of wine you like to have with your steaks and you have it by the glass, get it at a restaurant. Um, highly would recommend that. I would highly recommend this wine um, for my palate and for most people's palates. All right, so. Um, just did the uh, Riesling episode, or an episode, but I did the whole Riesling testing li uh, live. Hopefully you were watching on Ustream. Uh, I'm gonna try to have some more of these things in the future. 
And um, that's going to do it. We'll see everybody again next time.